All right, for the third and final of the assumptions list, large stars cannot rip away the thick atmospheres of much older stars exposing their cores. Large stars are ripping away the thick atmospheres of much older stars exposing their cores. They are called hot Jupiters. Orbits of all the objects in the galaxy are stable. Capture is a method for solar system formation. Big objects, big objects capture smaller objects. The orbits only appear stable because of humanity's relatively short existence. One million years is nothing compared to the Earth's history. And I need to edit these, but I'll read them off for you. The Earth is one third the age of the entire universe. The, the universe never began. It is both eternal and time and space. It is all times and all places. Since it is all times, it cannot have a single time for its beginning. Understanding what universe means and then proposing it had a beginning is flawed reasoning. As well, how did they determine the age of an entire galaxy? They date what they consider to be the oldest star inside of that galaxy? An analogy can show why this reasoning is flawed as well. Do we... Do we figure out the age of a tree by figuring out how old a leaf is? Or do we look at the tree itself? Why did we assume a single star could be the age of an entire galaxy which it inhabits? An even bigger question should be asked, did they, why did they assume all galaxies are the same age? Quasars are at their redshift distance. The redshift of quasars is caused by them exiting the parent galaxies at high velocity. They are not at their proposed redshift distance. This means using redshift to determine their distance is flawed. Redshift determines a quasar's velocity. Galaxies are all moving away from each other. Galaxies are observed to collide and merge all over the universe. If they were all moving away from each other in an expanding universe, then these observations would not exist. Redox reactions have no place in stellar evolution or the formation of land in the interiors of gas giants. Reduction and oxidation reactions are primary to the formation of land and the evolution of the interiors of gas giant stars, as well as red dwarfs, I need to edit that, and earlier stages of stellar evolution. The best electrolytic substance is comprised of aqueous solutions with free ions, not plasma. Plasma is completely comprised of free ions and electrons. This means plasma can be much more electrolytic than aqueous solutions, which comprise very few free ions. And all young stars are comprised of plasma, meaning they are all very electrolytic. This also means young stars can form giant electrolytic capacitors which can store and release huge amounts of electric charge. 41. Thermodynamic phase transitions carry no real importance to stellar evolution. Condensation, vaporization, solidification, ionization, recombination, deposition, sublimation, and melting are central to star evolution as the enthalpy of the star diminishes and it evolves. Electrical currents, magnetic fields, and the motion they induce are irrelevant to the evolution, formation, and configuration of the celestial objects. Here I have electrical current plus magnetic field equals force material. That's Fleming's left-hand rule for motors. A magnetic field plus moving material equals electrical current. Fleming's right-hand rule from generators. It's also MHD or EMHD or electromagnetohydrodynamics. Hans Alfein was a big proponent of that. Earth's water was transported to it as is from objects not formed on the Earth. I have here, Earth's water was formed on the Earth as it evolves from earlier stages of evolution. Chemical reactions play the central role to water formation. Here's one example of it. Acid plus base equals salt plus water. Neutralization reaction or double replacement reaction, which is hydrochloric acid in aqueous solution plus sodium hydroxide in aqueous solution equals NaCl, which is salt, and H2O, which is water, leading to saltwater oceans. The whole idea that water had to be transported here is rooted in the false dogma of all comets being dirty snowballs, 
when it is well known that they are rocks and minerals. There could be many hundreds of ways to form water oceans, some chemical reactions producing more water than others. Comets bringing water here is unnecessary. It's ad hoc. Comets are dirty snowballs. Comets are stellar shrapnel. When a body slams into another will determine what composition the comet is. This means comets can be comprised of any element or molecule. Last but not least, here's another major assumption. Astronomers and astrophysicists actually understand what they are talking about because they went to school. Schooling and truth are not always the same thing. Four elements, Earth being flat, the Sun being the center of the universe, according to Copernicus even, etc. There are always different levels to truth. School does not teach this. I think that really sums up the, uh, the talk. But uh, hopefully people can really get how many assumptions have turned into dogma that are not being questioned by professionals. And the professionals think that these assumptions are correct because they are dogma, which is kind of like a, like a dangerous feedback loop of assuming and dogma back to assuming again. And they don't realize that they're trapped in it. They don't realize that they're chained to the walls as in Plato's allegory of the cave. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I will go ahead and post this to the bottom of the video.